Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Talking Legal with Templars. My name is Victoria Oloni, an associate with the corporate and commercial practice here in Templars. And with me is my partner, Ijeoma Uju. Today we will be discussing a very interesting topic that has gathered a lot of buzz and frenzy in the past 6 to 12 months, artificial intelligence. In this episode, we'll be looking at legal considerations, we'll be looking at challenges, potentials, the risk, and of course, our projections for the future. Hi, Joma. Hi, Victoria. I'm really excited to talk about this topic because it has attracted so much attention within and outside the tech community. People are beginning to understand the use cases for artificial intelligence around various sectors, even in the Nigerian economy. So what do you think the potential is for AI in Nigeria? Wow. There has been quite a buzz in the last couple of months, haven't there? Definitely. Yes. And I think this buzz really has been driven by the simplicity in the new user interfaces. So these new user interfaces have allowed people to create text, graphics, images within seconds. So that's what the buzz is all about. Because first, AI is not brand new. We've had AI as far back as the 1960s. We've even had chatbots. And even... um. People have been creating machines that have been simulating human intelligence for a while. So I just wanted to say that first of all, it's not brand new, but it's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's very exciting times, especially with generative AI. So for Nigeria and Nigerian sectors, I think there's such immense potential if we can begin to deploy and utilize this across sectors, like you mentioned. One key sector, and where it's already been deployed in the financial services sector. Mm -hmm. So in the financial services sector, I think they're almost comfortable there, especially with tech, because increasingly tech is being deployed, different kinds of tech, including generative AI. So in the tech, financial services sector, it's being used for predicting market trends. It's being used to actually give personalized financial services. So there's so much potential in, in that area already. One that really excites me though, is the health sector. AI is being used to give accurate diagnosis. So you can actually diagnose illnesses such as cancer, even four years before it's, it's detected. So for me, that is immense. The one that really excites me is robots. They are actually using robots to perform operations with precision. Now, a question that I raised in my mind was, okay, if something goes wrong, if the robot makes a mistake during the operation, who is going okay. to have liability? Um, but I won't go into that now. I'm sure we'll talk about the legal considerations further down the line. Another one which I think is critical for Nigeria is the education sector. So world over, there is the AI for personalized um, education resources for children. You know, they are deploying that mass skills so that children can interact with these um, resources for personalized learning experiences. And one that I'm wondering why it hasn't been heavily deployed yet. It's the public sector. As you know, government is the largest holder of data. Yeah. Government holds all the data. They know the citizens. They have the citizen data, biometrics, whatever they have it. So in their agencies, they should begin to deploy it, you know, use it. Because a lot of the government tax are repetitive tax. So you shouldn't have to go in to a government agency to get a tax done. They should be able to deploy AI in a way that there would be no human interaction anymore. And, you know, that also solves some other problems for us in Nigeria as well. <laughs> and well, so that can also be deployed because they have that data. They just be need to begin to utilize this in a very efficient manner. Given the immense and very widespread use cases, little wonder there's so much force and frenzy around it. But beyond the buzz, let's get down to the legal issues. Because we are so excited about AI, ChatGPT can do so much. In the legal sector now, we heard of the cases in the US and in South Africa where lawyers generated briefs, four briefs using ChatGPT. Unfortunately, there were wrong and bogus citations which the court flagged and sanctioned. This is just one of those issues. Organizations and businesses that are deploying artificial intelligence, there are legal considerations they need to pay attention to Absolutely. now. So what are these legal issues? So first of all, before an organization or a business deploys AI, they have to even know what strategy they want to adopt. So for some people, they are creating layers and integrating it into their systems. Some are partnering with AI-focused firms. 
And, you know, so depending on whatever strategy that you are going to adopt or whatever approach you want to take in deploying it, you must, must understand and assess what the mix are and mm -hmm. understand what your legal constraints are because they are definitely there. Because we are talking about things, we are talking about artificial intelligence, not humans. So you want to be able to understand it before you fully, fully utilize it. The obvious one is misinformation because these are data sets that have been trained on different things. So if wrong data is put in, then they are going to get inf incorrect information. So that is there. There's a very high risk of that. A critical one is also um, data protection. As you know, globally, data protection has been prioritized. And this is because of all of these technologies that have developed over time. So organizations must prioritize privacy, data protection, because as they use this um, technology, you must know that it is the data that is out there on the world wide web that is being trolled and that is being collected. Mm -hmm. There is no separate set of data. So the tendency that there will be personal information, very sensitive information in the mix is there. So they have to be cognizant to be able to know that um, for personal information, you get consent. They must know the data protection laws. For organizations that do a lot of cross-border activities, they must understand and know the data protection laws for those other jurisdictions in which they are performing operations. Tied to that is also intellectual property. It is safe to say that there will be disputes there. There are already disputes. Just recently, um, some authors um, sued Meta at OpenAI. OpenAI is the tech startup behind ChatGPT. They sued them for using their copyrighted books. So they used, sued them for using it to train some of their machine models. It's inevitable that the intellectual property and property um, copyright issues are going to come up. So you must be cognizant of that. Then liability, which you spoke about, I was going to, I mean, when I spoke about the, um, Hell, about, to you. you know, yeah, self-forming operations, um, organizations need to be assessed, like where will liability lie if mistakes are made by these machines, by these systems? So who is going to be responsible? Is it these AI systems? Is it the creator of those AI systems? Where will liability lie when mistakes are made? Is it going to be split? So we don't have any um, clear policy. All of this has been developed, but those are questions that will definitely arise and need to be assessed eventually. You've mentioned the number of risks. Are we saying people should stop or there are ways to actually mitigate these risks in organizations? Absolutely not. There's no stopping of this. It is a question of utilizing it and deploying it in an ethical, a transparent and a fair manner. So that is the goal at the moment. So what is important is for organizations to begin to train themselves. So train themselves of these systems. I mean, for the training is twofold. For the creators, there needs to be training that the AI is being created in an ethical manner, free of um, discrimination, free of bias. For those that intend to deploy it and partner with these AI-focused companies, they must make sure they obtain it from reputable companies. They must make sure that um, and they have to minimize their risks to, um, to ensure that these um, systems are fit for purpose for their own. Mm -hmm. So training is very essential. Training for the employees or the people within the organization that are also going to use it because there are different uses. How are you going to use it? In what manner is it going to? How do we want it to fit into our value system? So all of that have to be assessed. For liability, the best way to treat that is actually preventive. You have to have preventive measures. You have to put in place security systems that are going to make sure that um, in creating those things that liability shouldn't even arise at all because we're actually talking of, in some cases, physical harm, mental harm. So preventive measures such as guidelines and probably that's where the regulators will come in because sometimes innovators, as good as their intentions are, can get ahead of themselves. So maybe that's where regulators will come in, you know, to just set the tone on the guidelines. So I'll just pick up from your point on regulators. Because this is tech, innovators are constantly trying to move fast. Every day there is something new. And then there are regulators playing catch up. Now in Nigeria, in shaping AI, what do you think the role of regulators will be? Well, I'm hoping that it will play a vital role um, because it's because of the risks I've mentioned previously mm -hmm. and because there's going to be, so we need some guidance along the way. So I'm hoping they will be involved in a way that they are able to assume the position of 
you know, bringing out guidelines that would make sure that AI is being used in a fair and responsible manner. Um, good enough, the Nigerian Information Technology Development Agency, that's NITA, is already leading the way by developing a national AI policy, which is in its first draft. Mm -hmm. We also have the National Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, and that is focused on research and research on things around artificial intelligence, drones, Internet of Things. So with all of that, I'm thinking that the regulator is going to gain some understanding because it's so important for them to begin to understand and know how they are going to drive policy. So I'm hoping the role is going to be one of understanding, assessing, collaborating, you know, with the creators, with the users of this AI to ensure that it's being used ethically, to ensure that it's being used responsibly, you know, and to do that, they also have to train, they have to upskill. It's innovation that they don't know anything about. You cannot regulate what you do not understand. I know some of them tend to, but when you regulate what you do not understand, you regulate not responsibly. Yes, so you need, yeah, it might just be a prohibitions and bars, like we say. So it's very important for them to begin to catch up very quickly, understand, and to catch up, they need to collaborate. So I want, I want to believe they are going to play a vital role in the development of AI in Nigeria. And that's very interesting. If anything that happened in the past six to 12 months is a pointer to what is going to happen in the future, the movement and the development of artificial intelligence will be very fast and it will move really quickly. So based on your experience in the tech ecosystem, what are your projections for artificial intelligence in Nigeria and the nearest future? Well, I think um, like the tech ecosystem in Nigeria has moved on very fast and, and it's not going to be any different for AI, you know, because the projections, financial projections are that by 20, in 2022, the financial projection where it was, that industry was um, about um, 87 billion US dollars and are projecting 407 billion US dollars. Yes, no. by, 20, by 2027, that is huge. So I'm very sure that Nigeria is going to key into that. The creators, the innovators are going to key into that. I expect to see a lot of um, AI-powered startups that are going to be focused on creating and also deploying these across sectors. So our tech ecosystem is actually developing at a very fast rate. We can see our fintech ecosystem. So it's not going to be different. So all of this is going to key in and be fused the, because AI really is still part of that ecosystem. So this AI we're talking about is not... It's not something far-fetched, it is now. So whatever strategies are going to be implemented is for the now. So it's not far-fetched at all. It is with us and it's going to be now. And the regulators that I spoke about, I'm going to, we're going to see increased regulatory involvement, policies, guidelines, you know, because right now there's no checklists for anyone to follow. We don't have the best practice. Everyone is still really trying to understand. There may be pauses, I don't know. But we, you heard about them. Um, there was an open letter by Mr. Moss and friends, and they called for a pause because they wanted there to be some, some understanding. They were talking about the imminent risks and dangers. Is that but realistic? I don't think so. I think it's a case of the horse has bolted and now you want to close the stable door. So I think what we should be focusing on right now is to ensure that these technologies, all of these emerging technologies, are transparent, their functionality are transparent to all, that data is being used in an ethical manner and, you know, it's fair and, and there's responsibility involved in those creating and those using it. This has been a very exciting conversation and we know that we'll see a lot more of it as the technology evolves and as people get more involved. Thank you so much for this. Thank you, Thank you for joining us today on this episode of Talking Legal with Templars and see you next time.